The paintbrush tool is one of the most primary tools in 3D Code's painting tool set. With the tool activated, it's the very top one on the uh, tool panel here. You can also access it from hitting the spacebar panel. It's over here on the right in the middle. Okay. So on any layer other than zero, uh, we'll paint on layer one here. We can simply make strokes directly on our mesh and paint it with color. It also takes into account all your brush alphas, strips, masks, materials, as well as all the e-panel modes. There'll be another video for the e-panel mode since it's, it's uh, such an in-depth topic itself. So look out for that one. Now I'm also going to be showing the airbrush tool since they're, they're similar but somewhat different. Let's go to another area where I haven't painted on yet and change color. We'll go to some kind of how about a greenish yellow. That'll do. Okay, and you may have noticed actually if we go back to this side over here, we'll make a few strokes with a smaller brush. You'll notice that even while doing this, some of those areas aren't being completely filled in. It might be hard to see in the video, but you can see right here and right here. That's because, as I mentioned earlier, it respects your brush alphas. So this number one default, as we all call it, uh, has, if we change the brush here so you can see it, it has slightly faded edges starting from the center it's very bright and then going out to the edge or outside so the white color means that it's going to have more coverage the darker it is toward black the least amount of coverage so if we select a different alpha for example the speckles scale up our brush move over here you'll see that it is now painting with speckles and likewise, we can use the buttons and things like that. I've got my own little, little tool here that um, you can see it's made of squares and it's kind of bouncing around. And it's also using various colors, but that's a that's a custom tool. Uh, here's another one, just some rings. You can't really can't really see it all that well. That's uh, also kind of jittering a little bit. It's one of my custom brushes that I made. All right, so I think we've shown that well enough. Now let's talk about the differences between the airbrush and the standard brush tool. Let's grab the, let's grab this alpha here, alpha number six. This is one of my favorites. And we'll turn the depth down. I'm keeping the opacity at 100. You'll notice that it's more or less spot on with the color that I have selected. But if we crank it up to 200%, it's a little stronger, but not by much. Um, how you can have opacity of 200, I don't know, but you can. So there that is. Let's go down to 50%. So this is 200. That's 100. This is 50. Let's go down to 25. Barely see it, but hopefully you can still see it. Okay, now let's show the difference between the standard brush and the airbrush you'll notice that as i painted i made little circles the colors didn't add up to make it brighter unless i released with my stylus and made another stroke which i did not do the airbrush is a little different let's go up to well i guess we don't have to do 200 percent oh let's start at 100 okay so i just made one little dab and it's not really doing much but if i do circles You'll see it's building up, right? Now let's do 50% since 100 isn't all that obvious. So you might expect it to be looking somewhat like the um, standard brush was. Let's go ahead and try that out. So I'm just gonna do one circle. I'm not gonna release my stylus and you'll see that it's building up as I do it to get the same result as at 100%. And the same thing will happen at 25. It just happens a little slower. 
So the point is, is that the airbrush tool is a good way of layering on small amounts of color. And if we change it down to 10%, we can sit here and make a single stroke and it'll keep adding the color up. Let's switch back over to the standard brush tool. And at 25%, all we're ever going to get is 25%, no matter what. So the, I guess in short, what I'm trying to say is that the airbrush tool is additive, while the standard brush tool is not. If you have it at 25% opacity, it's always going to be 25% opacity. If you have it at 50%, it's going to always be 50%. So not so with the airbrush tool. Okay, let's show a little bit about using these two tools with depth and specularity. We can do all three at the same time if we choose to, uh, but I'm going to briefly just show depth. I'm going to change to the default alpha one. And uh, by right clicking and dragging left and right, you can change the size of the brush. You can also right click and hold and then drag up and down. You can see the red curve there inside the brush uh, changing its intensity. You might also notice up here on the top bar that the depth is changing as well. Let's go with a slightly larger brush and uh, we'll go to just under 20%. Okay. And you can see it's, it's brushing right there on this creature's snout area. It's a little intense at, the, at this uh, percentage. So let's lower it down a little bit. Let's go 10%. This is the greatest sculpture ever. No, it's not. <laughs> right. So um, you can see this one does build up with every stroke, just like it does with color. If we did one stroke, it does one layer. So if it's at 10% like it is now, until I release and make another stroke, it's always going to be 10%. So if I sit here and draw on one area, it's going to keep building up like so. All right. Now let's go on over to specularity. We'll start with the standard brush tool. This one might not be so obvious. We can also control the specularity on the top bar here. And uh, let's see. Yes, you can see it quite well, actually, if I move the camera. So that's at 100% with the airbrush tool. You can't go higher than 100%. Uh, let's go down to 50. We'll do it over here on this green patch. So you can see it's a little less specular. But if we draw again, it builds up a little. And you can see the differences between the two there. So as we did with depth and color, you can use the standard brush tool to build up the specularity. All right, let's use the airbrush tool and we'll turn the specularity down to 10%. If you continuously use this tool, it will build up, I think 10% might not be working so well. Let's try 50. There we go. That's going to show up a little better. So just like it did before with depth and color, it slowly builds up. Finally getting built up to where it's starting to become a little, little specular. And this is my preference, I, I should point out. I prefer to use the airbrush tool for specularity uh, over the standard pin for most things, unless I'm using a mask, which I'll talk about later. Because You can see the way it looks. It, it just feels much better, and it has a more natural look to it, at least for organics. For hard surface, I don't think it really matters so much. So that'll do it for this video. 